As Solidity developers, we are spoiled by the number of third-party protocols that we can connect out to. From within our code, we can make calls to external contracts to carry out tasks such as swapping tokens or depositing to a yield farm, for example. To make these calls, we use interfaces. And in this tutorial, we're gonna go through some examples of common interfaces and how to use them. My name is James Buccini, and on this channel, I create content about DeFi and blockchain development. If you're interested in learning more, then consider subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna be using Remix here. I'm also gonna be using a local version of Hardhat Node. So let's open up PowerShell. And we're gonna run npx hardhat node hyphen hyphen fork. And then we're gonna use this address, which is a Alchemy API address to fork a local version of the Ethereum mainnet on our local machine. So basically keep creating a copy of the current state of the mainnet on our local device so that we can interact with that using free tokens, but we can also interact with external contracts to test them out. So you need your Alchemy API key in there. You can get that from the Alchemy website. It's free to use. Let's go ahead and start it up. To get this running, you also need Node.js and Hardhat installed, obviously. And when you fire it up, you should get a list of demo accounts and they'll all be loaded with ETH. Now if we go back into Remix, let's go to the contracts and create a new contract. I'm going to call this mycontract.sol. And then I'm going to copy and paste this example in from a blog post. I'm not going to do live coding for your patience and my embarrassment. So we're going to use an identifier and a version of Solidity. Then we're going to create our first interface. So we can use the interface keyword. Then note the naming convention always, almost always uses a capital I to start the name of the interface. And then this is uh, just adding one function from the ERC20 standard, the balance of function. And all this does is it returns the balance from a token contract of how much of that token each user has. So you pass in a user account or an Ethereum address, and it will tell you how many tokens that user holds. Then if we get into our contracts, the other thing to note is that the interface is declared outside and before the contract itself. We're gonna have a single function here, which is check, that returns a uint256 variable, an unsigned integer. We have a couple of addresses here as well, user address and a token address. We, these are hard coded in. Obviously normally you pass them into the variable itself. And then all we're doing to interact with this external contract is saying the balance equals IERC20, which is what we declared the interface name as. And then passing in the address of the contract itself, this is the token contract address. And then we're calling the balance of function, which we declared as part of our interface. So the interface is essentially telling our, our smart contract how to interact with that third party contract. What's the name of the function and how to call it and what data it kind of takes as an input and what data it returns. We're then sending it our user address, which is this user's address here, and we're returning our balance to the output of this function. Let's try compiling this and run it on our local node. Let's compile, and then go to hardhat provider, and then we're gonna change the contract name to my contract. Let's deploy that. And we've got an instance of that contract. If we open this up now, we can run the check function, which will execute this. And it returns this balance, which is certainly not my balance, but it's some whale who holds a whole lot of the uni token. So that's a really simple example of how we can connect out to a third party uh, token contract and check the balance of our account. Let's have a look at how we would do this more in practice. And we can copy and paste this one in. And now we're importing the Open Zeppelin library. So rather than import every function from the ERC20 standard, we can just import the whole library from OpenZeppelin and that'll be um, stored in IERC20. So it's the equivalent of what we just done. We can also expand this. So WEF is the wrapped Ethereum token. And this is a standard ERC20, but it also has a couple of extra functions. It has this deposit and withdraw functions. What they're used for is it's like you can deposit ETH and you get back wrapped ETH and then you can withdraw it by sending back the wrapped ETH and getting your um, native token back. So this will work in exactly the same way. We can compile, deploy, open it up. And because the naming convention here is the same and we know that the balance off is part of that standard and it's including this interface, it will work exactly the same. But we also have access, we could do um, deposit for example, because that function is 
added via this extension here. So, so far we've looked at tokens. Let's go and have a look at something a little bit more interesting. So let's have a look at something a bit more interesting. Let's have a look at Aave. So again, we're going to import the ERC20 standard, and then we're going to create another interface, a second interface for Aave. And we've just got these deposit, borrow, repay, withdraw, and get user account data. So these aren't the only functions of the lending pool for Aave. I think this is for V2. Um, but they're certainly functions that we can use to do most of the tasks that we'd want to do within our contract. So for example, Aave is a borrowing and lending platform. So we want to deposit collateral. Do we want to take out a loan? We might want to repay that loan and then withdraw our collateral. And all the time we can call this get user account data, which will give us things like our uh, position health. Once we have the interfaces set up, we can call the contract. And we've got a deposit function here, which takes the Aave contract address or the lending pool address for Aave. I'll show you how to get all these contract addresses and how to create these interfaces in a second. And then we've got the IERC20, we're approving the spend of that token, so the Aave contract, um, which is at this address, can actually take them tokens from us. And then we're gonna call the deposit function on Aave so that they can take the tokens and take that as collateral into their system. Let's see if this works. So it is. I think we need to make this contract payable. Let's try that. And this is so we can actually send some funds to the contract because though our accounts have addresses, this is executed as the contract's address, obviously. So let's deploy that. Yeah, and then we've got transaction mined and executed, succeed, execution succeeded. So what we've done is we've actually sent funds to this contract and then the contract has deposited those funds into the wrapped Ethereum contract. They've then approved the for Aave to take them funds basically. And then we've called the Aave deposit function to say, come take these funds and deposit as collateral onto your system. And that has all gone through. Now let's have a look at how we would kind of get to the point where we can find these interfaces. So for example, we've got this wrapped Ethereum token and this is gonna be a verified contract. We can go into this contract and we can pull out the ABI. That should be fine. Uh, copy that. Now if we go into that little website where we can convert ABIs to Solidity interfaces, we can paste this in and look at this. We've got a full interface for Aave. And you can see this has created a much larger interface because it's taken out every function from that contract. Likelihood is we don't need to find like call the contract symbol to find out what the symbol for WEF is within our contract. We already know that. So there's, there's no need for some of these and we can just pick and choose the ones that we need. The other really good place to find ABIs and interfaces is on GitHub. You can even search like iLend pool. If you're looking for the Aave contract, you know what the function is called. You can just put I in front of it and look for that. Uh, if you search all of GitHub, well, there's certain places like Beefy Finance has this kind of directory of interface, but it's just absolutely loads of different kind of interfaces that you can pull out and it will kind of give you the interface. This is for the Mini Chef V2 contract on SushiSwap. And you see you've got all your functions here and you can just steal this off them basically. To find contract addresses, I just normally Google. So for example, Aave lending pool contract etherscan. There you go, got a lending pool and that should match up 0x7d27 with the one that we were using earlier. 0x7d27, there we go. Probably a more sophisticated way of doing that would be to go onto the RA documentation. You see we've got the V3 overview, and if we switch this to V2, there should be a section normally in most kind of good documentation where we can go in and find the addresses for the deployed contracts. Here's the lending pool. You know, you've actually got the interface here as well, which is really useful. Lots of notes. And somewhere, there you go. So we've got the main net and Coven test net. We've got the lending pool address provider and the iLending pool is this one, 0x72D27. 
So there's a few different ways that you can find contract addresses. And if you open up this contract and EFA scan, go into the contract tab, scroll down until you get to the ABI. You can copy the ABI from here, paste it into this little tool, which is linked to in the blog. Um, it's gnidon.github.io ABI to Soul. Probably if you used to search ABI to Soul, it'll come up and we can paste that in and it will create an interface for you. And the final thing that I want to show you is if we copy this address, if you have Foundry set up, I'm using Windows subsystems for Linux. Foundry is a framework a little bit hard at, and we can use the cast command interface, paste that contract address in here. And with a bit of luck, it will print out the interface here. You can see it's actually printed out the interface for a proxy because this address is actually for a proxy for another contract that sits behind it. And if we wanted to call the implementation command, that'd actually give us the address of the contract that sits behind this proxy contract. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. If you want to learn more about Solidity, then consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to like button for YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.